Hey, everybody. I am Eloise Mumford, and I am joined by my tremendous good friends, spectacular co-stars, Dan Janot and Brenda Strong. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. We are so excited for you guys to see our new movie. It's called Sweeter Than Chocolate. And it's part of Love You, Larry. And we have a couple of questions that Hallmark Channel sent our way. And we are going to answer them for you guys. And also, we're just going to hang out, which I think we're all very excited to be doing. We're happy to see each other again. Yeah. Oh, I have the first question. Okay. Yes. So in, uh, in Sweeter Than Chocolate, my character Lucy and her mom, Helen, own a shop that's famous for their legendary chocolate <laughs> This is the first movie that the three of us are all in together. So, guys, tell me, what was it like working together? Well, you know, anytime you work on something with people that you, you don't know, it's a, it's, a, it's a gamble. You just don't know what it's going to be like. And I think that we uh, we hit the jackpot together. Absolutely. Yeah. It was lovely and so good and so... Um, it felt so um, relaxing and such a relief to meet you both and to just know kind of right away, we're going to get along. This is going to work out. You know, one of the things that I find with all of these great Hallmark love stories is that it's all about chemistry. And that's something that, that people tune in for on screen. But what I really felt was that the three of us had chem chemistry off screen. We really like each other. Yeah. And we had fun. And, um, and there, it, it was just a joy, you know, it's showing up to work every day. So, um, when you it's have that, like that, it's not always like that. It's not always like that. Okay. And even though, you know, it is on screen, sometimes behind the scenes, it's a little more difficult or challenging, but there was such an authenticity with Eloise and Dan. And I just felt like, oh, this is just such a joy. So it was great. And I fell in love with you, Brenda, instantly. So that was like, that felt like magic to me too. No, it's true. I mean, I don't think people realize how quickly we shoot these movies. They're really, it's really, it's hard work. It, they, they go incredibly fast. They're really long hours. And that can be really fun if you're working pe with people who you love. But if you, if you are working with people who are hard to be around, which sometimes happens, not all the time, but sometimes it does, um, it makes it, it makes it hard. So I felt really lucky to come to work every day. And towards the end of it, it was sort of that thing where I was like, oh man, I don't want it to be over. Yeah. What a nice fun. So hopefully, hopefully that'll translate onto the screen. I think it will. I think people will see what fun we had hanging out together. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll just come across. These are people that enjoy uh, spending time together. You know? And and what's nice is when we have that relationship, we get to keep each other. So we're still in each other's lives, which Thank you, Hallmark, for that. You just gave me a daughter that I never had before that I absolutely love. So. I love that. Yeah. Um, can we move on to the next one? Sure. Yeah. So to help promote their business, Lucy begrudgingly teams up with TV reporter Dean. Can we share more about their meet cute? <clears throat> can we um sure let's uh so they they meet and it's it's he's cute so it makes it pretty cute um we how do well we we meet in that we sort really of class. runs him over let's be honest yeah yeah the classic way of an almost <laughs> fatal car accident um and uh they see each other and they instantly think they're cute and, and then it just sort of goes on like it does in life where you see somebody cute and you're like oh, okay hello and then life just continues on. Next thing you know, he walks into her shop and it's revealed that he is um, maybe going to be an adversary as all good love stories start. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it goes from there. Uh, we actually had fun filming that because uh, we had to sort of kind of come near to hitting each other. Or I had to come close to hitting Dan with the car. <laughs> it's true. She was actually driving a car, no stunt driver. Um, and she actually had to drive it right up to my knees oh, and God. stop on it. That's a trust. That's trust. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was like, I'm up for it. Let her do it. And if she wants to kill me, maybe it'll work in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to add anything about our meet cute? I think what is uh, what's great about it is that. You know, often these, these kinds of romantic comedies, like you were saying, could have a sort of adversarial um, relationship between the, the two romantic leads, or they they might not 
realize or admit that they that they have feelings for each other. But I think in this movie, I, I kind of feel like they know it, or at least Dean knows it pretty much right away. Um, and it's more a question of when are they going to open up and when are they going to actually uh, let themselves feel what is clearly already there. I, I think that that's really sweet. I know. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the heart knows before the head does. Mm -hmm. And when you guys first saw each other through the windshield, I think you both kind of, your hearts both went, oh, but then it took a while for your heads to catch up. Yeah. It's a good way yeah. to put it. Yeah. It's like a recognizing, right? Like a, like a familiar, like re-meeting, a re-meeting of someone familiar, even though you've never seen them before. Right. You know? But I think that you're right, Dan. It's like it's set up that they're going to be adversaries, but they're not really at all. I mean, for they it's like the the conditions of the story that they should be, but there isn't really any of that tension between them. Just a tiny bit at the beginning, but it's not really what it's about. It's about the fact that they know all along. They know all along. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they just uh, take a whole movie to admit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, okay, should we do the next one? Oh, yeah. I could see. Uh, okay, so it's me. So Lucy and Dean get to hear wonderful stories as they interview couples sharing how Cupid chocolates made a big impact in their lives. So what makes the chocolate cupids or the Cupid chocolates so special? Well, yes. I think uh, one of the one of the things that this story does really beautifully is it shows that there are different kinds of love stories and love can happen to you at different times in your life, whether or not you're expecting it. And through the through the, the couples that they interview, uh, the audience gets to see these different snippets of different people's love stories. Mm -hmm. And if you know. If if there's a magic in the chocolates, it's kind of the magic of, um, um, you know, the, the magic of being in the right place at the right time and having that that open heart that you need mm -hmm. to fall in love. You know. Yeah. yeah. I also think. Yeah, well, at least you and I are so funny. We're all. Like, I also think <laughs> that's mom and dad about it is because it's a family recipe. So there's this lineage to it. There's this specialness of passing on something um, magical from one generation to another. So it actually is representative of what we give each other um, through love. And I think that's what's beautiful is um, Eloise's character, Lucy, doesn't want to dishonor that lineage, right? Mm. She wants to honor it because she loves her grandfather. Um, and and when it comes down to it, um, it is absolutely the magic that it represents that brings the two of you together. But go ahead. And it's like, it's like lucky socks, you know, like, do you, do you get the job when you, because you wore your lucky socks to the interview or do you get the job because you felt like you were wearing your lucky, like you felt lucky because you were wearing those lucky socks to the interview yeah. and like either way who cares you still wear the lucky sock you know what I mean that you can't distinguish between the two like it doesn't it doesn't matter it's that's that's the magic of it all and I think that's the thing about the chocolates like do they fall in love because they ate magic chocolates or is the magic that they because they ate the chocolates they wanted to fall in love and so who cares it's 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 one and the same you know it's the same I still wear my lucky socks to all the things yeah. you know? and it's the permission it's the permission to actually take the leap. Yeah. You know, a, for a lot of people, it's just the willingness to be open and take the leap. That's the biggest like distance between to love or not love. Mm -hmm. yeah. the courage also, let's be real. When you meet somebody that you fall in love with, it is, it does feel like magic, you know, mm -hmm. like revealing myself as a hopeless romantic, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not okay. Alone. <laughs> I'm going to do the next one. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, Helen encourages Lucy to highlight her magic chocolates. Dean, however, is skeptical of the legend and needs to tell the story to help his career. So how do our characters end up working together? Well, yeah. So Dean is first, Dean's an investigative journalist and he's first sent to do a uh, story about the chocolate shop that's not meant to be investigative, but it's meant to be a kind of feel good story. 
And he immediately, uh, you know, uh, gets his guard up. Red, red flags go up for him because he sees um, a business that, in his mind, might be manipulating people's ideas about love. And so he's a little bit, um, yeah, he's skeptical, to, to be sure. Uh, but then they realize, I think, like we were saying before, that they're not, they're not adversaries. And even though he might be a bit skeptical, you know, professionally, he, he knows, he sees right away that she's a good person, that they're a good family, and that they're doing something kind of beautiful in their, in their neighborhood, in their community. And they start working together, realizing that they can kind of help each other out, um, help out both of their professional goals. Mm -hmm. Also, it's kind of just an excuse for them to spend time together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, by the way, wait till you guys see Dan doing Dean as an investigative reporter, because it is <laughs> my favorite things. <laughs> like, I think I fell in love with him when I saw him doing the zucchini bit uh, against the green <laughs> Oh, that just sounds wrong. There's a very, <laughs> but Dan, also, your boss keeps throwing you back in the pool. I mean, had it just been one story, it might not have continued. But the more you were around Lucy, the more you had to interact with her, the more you started to see how pure her heart really was. And she wasn't trying to, you know, pull the wool over anyone's eyes. She was really respectful and she believed in love. And you were able to kind of off the cuff trick her into to saying what she truly felt about it because she froze on camera. Um, I think it just you kept having that persistent um, kind of opportunity through your work to be exposed to her. And she's I mean, let's let's just face it. She's irresistible. I mean, she's like chocolate. You just can't get enough. Right. Well, and I think there's that thing, too, right, where they they are, even though they seem so different from the outside, they're mirrors of each other, you know, and they both yeah. look, it happens to all of us, like the older we get, the more loss we endure in our lives, the more we want to protect ourselves and like close ourselves mm -hmm. off. And whether that looks like, you know, um, skepticism, or whether it looks like uh, denial or resistance, you know, we all have that in different ways in our lives. Mm -hmm. and. And both Lucy and Dean have that. And so they really are mirroring to each other a person who's who was a who believes in love, but who's been really hurt and who doesn't quite know how to admit it out loud. And so I think they recognize that in each other and and um and then we get to see them finally let down their their guards and I do well professionally, which is nice too. I just realized something that, yeah. that may be corny, but you guys <laughs> chocolate cupids you're hard on the outside and soft on the inside right I that. That. I you didn't really? say that in the movie <laughs> i know i can't believe it that's what brilliant metaphor what a great kind of metaphor is that the the chocolate because you guys bit them they're hard on the outside but they're really soft and gooey on the inside and it's that harder the shell is to protect just how vulnerable and soft and beautiful the inside is so that's Can perfect. we say that in Even Sweeter Than Chocolate, the sequel, that we are willing into existence here? <laughs> We're pushing for it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, I think I have the next uh, question. Yes. While Lucy and Dean are working together, they learn how the chocolates help other people find love. Do we each have a favorite scene from the movie that we can share? Who'd like to go first? Wow. Brandon. Well, there's a lot of different scenes that I really love. Um, you know, one of my favorite scenes to watch were the two elderly women sitting talking about dancing because you realize just how far we've come in society that for them, that, that was just not something that they could have openly done, and yet they had the courage to do it was to dance together. Um, but the scene that I loved shooting the most was the scene after, um, are we allowed to talk about these things? Um, the scene after Lucy thinks that you're going to take the job in New York, and she shuts the, the, um, the shop down, and she's really upset, and she, it's, it's, and I'm, I'm really trying to figure out what's wrong with her when I finally realize it's because she might lose you that she's upset 
that scene where her vulnerability comes out and we talk about loss and love and that it's worth the risk. I just, I just loved that scene so much. I loved working with um, Eloise because I saw her little girl. I saw that vulnerable little girl in that scene and she was so good in that scene. And, you know, when you have a partner like that, bringing their truth and, and their kind of all of themselves to their work, it's just so easy. Um, and I just loved that scene between us. So not to be selfish and say it was one of my scenes, but I really enjoyed it. I loved that so much too, Brenda. And it was one of the first things we shot together too, yeah. which was interesting because it was such it is one of the most vulnerable uh moments of the movie and i think it really bonded us together and mm -hmm. i felt safe with you which is which is the greatest gift as an actor right and also just a human but um but i i loved i loved doing that scene with you too and i, I respect you so much i loved it you're so good. you're so good when you held my face i was like mom just melting <laughs> <laughs> I agree though. I liked watching. I loved watching, even in the filming of it, I loved watching all of the love stories. It's like a when Harry Met Sally sort of throwback thing of watching true love stories, which myself as a person outside of movies, I love asking people about that because I love how people light up when they, they when they talk about love in that way. And so it was fun to get to And I also loved all the chocolate stuff. Like uh Dan and I got to do some fun in the kitchen chocolate thing had a real chocolatier there telling us how to not look um, like newbies. That yeah. was really fun. Yeah. And then the, the Valentine's day party was one of my favorite scenes to film mm -hmm. um, in part because it was, we filmed in Canada, right. And it was Thanksgiving that day. And I was feeling very homesick because we were at work and sweet Dan is a Canadian. So he had already celebrated Canadian Thanksgiving, um, but was very aware of the fact that I uh, was, was homesick um mm. but it was like the best way to spend if you're gonna be doing anything on thanksgiving <laughs> it's a great thing to be having a valentine's day party and dancing with someone who's being incredibly uh lovely and just i felt so grateful so thankful in that moment to be doing this job with the two of you um mm. and so that was that that held a lot of specialness for me too mm. I was going to say that shot when we when we were making chocolate or when you were making yeah. chocolate in the uh, in the kitchen, that was really fun and funny because, you know, there's a there's an actual chocolatier there who who knows what they're doing. Um, but we don't have any time <laughs> to actually learn anything. And so you were you were, you know, doing a great job at faking like you knew how to make chocolate. Um, but it was. Uh, and then, and then you were, you know, passing me the utensils and saying, you know, go for it, try to do it yourself <laughs> and scraping the chocolate back and forth and pouring it out and everything. That was really fun. It's fun when you get to do something you know, uh, mm -hmm. tactile. Uh, and I also really like the scene that Brenda, you just reminded me of when Dean interviews Lucy for the first time, she's on camera, which she's not used mm -hmm. to being, and she's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. that scene was really really funny because you know for most of the movie um Eloise is uh you know playing a character who's in her element she's in her shop you know she's doing her, her job and it was very funny she was really cracking me up when we were doing this scene, being very awkward and like not knowing how to speak properly in full sentences and I <laughs> give rain to kind of um be be frustrated with her i guess as a as a as an interviewer and i think it was fun i think it's a funny scene it was certainly funny to film well i ruined some of your takes because i was laughing at what you were doing you were, just, <laughs> you were so funny i hope it's in the movie he does this thing where he like scratches off a lit uh like the thing on the list that when he, when he did it i died 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 and we, got, <laughs> we got to we got to um ad lib a bunch which was also mm. really you know, it always kind of brings it to life and makes it feel mm -hmm. more exciting and uh, real when you can just, yeah. not to say the script isn't great, but when you can just fill it in. Yeah. Run yeah. with the character a little bit. That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. yeah. 
So are we ready um, for number six? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Oh, you're number six. Yeah, yeah. you go. So um, <laughs> why is it so important to see that grief is part of loving? Um, and obviously, you know, Helen uh, is dealing with the loss of Lucy's dad. And um, we recently lost our family dog. And someone said to me, and this was a beloved um, soul dog for, for our family. And someone said to me, you know, don't be afraid of the grief because it is the equivalent to the amount of love. And um, it's just love that doesn't have any place to go. Mm. And I thought, oh, what a great way of, you know, in, in our culture, we push grief away because it's, you know, it's scary. Um, but when you, when you realize it's just love in a different form and it just doesn't have any place to go, then it, it allowed me to kind of see Helen, um, in a way that it wasn't about grieving, but it was about loving and finding a new place to put her love and the possibility of love at a certain age and, and to hold out that hope, not only for my own life, but also for my daughter, um, so I just think you know, that opportunity to um, explore grief as a part of love and hope, as opposed to something dark that we have to hide behind. Um, you know, grief is part of life. It just is. When you love something and you lose it, it's really sad. But then there's the possibility of having again. And that's, I think, what was so beautiful about this story, that it wasn't just all on the top about love, but it also had the bottom of that love. Um, yeah. But that's what I wanted to share. Yeah. What about you guys? Well, I just, as you were saying that, I was just thinking what a, what a beautiful job you did of bringing that to the screen um, and how lucky we are to have that in this film um, and to have your performance of it because it's true. Life is tremendously unfair and people lose people they love and pets they love and, you know, all sorts of things they love all the time um, for no rhyme or reason, right? And um, and have to endure that pain and to see your performance reflect all the all the varying facets of that um, in its in its complexity and it, and the joy of what was what was had, the loss of what you know it is now, and the possibility of the future. And look, for some people, there isn't a possibility of having it again. Or, you know, it'll never be again in that form. And I think it's really important to have movies that in the midst of all the love, in the midst of love you Ari, and, you know, romance and chocolates also shows um, that part of it. Because the truth is, people watching this film are going through that. We are going through that. I mean, you, you are very recently going through that, Brenda. Like, um, and how cool to be able to have that on screen. And how beautiful and how important also, that's what like our job as artists is to like bear our hearts um, and yeah. and let people feel less alone through that. And I think that's why people tune into Hallmark sometimes is to feel relief, you know, from the pain of their lives. And so to be able to hold both simultaneously and show them it's okay, you don't have to push it away, you don't have to hide, you can include it, you can metabolize it, it can be part of the beauty of your life, um, I, I think is a real gift. Yeah. And part of the relief is seeing somebody else go through it, right? Is that feeling you're not like, alone. Yeah. yeah. And the thing that's amazing about Helen is that it takes her a long time. And for every, you know, then that's, it takes as long as it takes. Look, that's just what life is. You know, mm -hmm. grief takes the time that it's going to take and, or it, or it takes forever. And then it's just living with it, you know? Um, and so I feel, I feel really honored to get to be a part of that and to have gotten to watch you bring such beautiful performance. Um, okay. Uh, Brenda, thank you. That was really beautiful. Mm. I just want to watch that. Um, okay. So this movie is extra sweet because it was a book first, which is super cool. And it was written by Lizzie Shane from Hallmark Publishing. Uh, so let's talk about our experience bringing this story to life as a movie from a book. Um, I'll say one of the things when I first read the script that uh, I think uh, translated, came over from the fact that it was a book first, was these these different stories that we see. It's not just one um, uh, love story, as we talked about. We get to see 
bits and pieces of other people's stories, uh, you know, with the, the kind of anchor of the, the, the chocolate shop and the, and the magic cupids. We get to see some of Helen and her husband's story. We get to see uh, all these different characters, different walks of life who are um, drawn together. Um, and I, I love that aspect of the script. And I think that it, it, um, it's, it's comes from the fact that it was a book first with a little bit more uh, space uh, to tell its story, you know? And like we were saying, watching those little storylines was always really pleasurable uh, for us when we were making the movie. And I think it's going to be really fun too for the audience to see uh, not just two people falling in love, but a bunch of people falling in love. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm also really proud, speaking of another thing I'm proud of with this movie, is the kind of love stories that they are. And Brenda, you touched on this earlier, but the fact that like love comes in all forms um, and the fact that the love stories have such a variety of the kind of uh, the, the kind of people who are falling in love is something that I'm really excited about and and feel um, uh, really glad for. And also speaking to what you're saying, Dan, like the sort of breadth of the of the fact that it comes from a book and not just a script it's also a love story about family and about friendship mm -hmm. which is my favorite kind of love story in a lot of ways mm -hmm. i mean i love a romance but i also like the truth is the long term love relationships in my life are my family and my friends and I think that's true for a lot of people, you know, as much as we want there to be like the one person who's always been there, it hasn't, it hasn't been that, but the people who have always been there are my friends and my family and they are, they are like the loves of my life. And so I love in this book that you have that as well. You have the friendship, you have the relationship between Helen and Lucy, which is a tremendous love story. Sure. It's not romance, but it's an epic love story in its own way. Mm -hmm. So I think that that comes from the fact that it's a fleshed out, but full novel. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think one of the, the sweetest things about the opportunity to take it from a book to the screen is that the author of the book got to be one of our background players. And she was so cute. She was so excited and she just, she was pinching herself because her book that she had spent all this time pouring her imagination into actually was coming to life in front of her very eyes and that she got to be a part of it. And I think that's the magic of movies. It really is. You can take an idea, a spark, something that's meaningful to you, and then you see it come to life before your eyes and then to experiencing it was a very meta moment. Um, I love those those things where life and art kind of mash up together and you just have this opportunity to, to pinch yourself going, is this really happening? <laughs> is my work really coming to life and I get to actually be inside my own story? Yeah. I used to, you know, play with dolls and I kept thinking maybe if I could get small enough, I could get, you know, myself inside yeah. that story. So anyway, I just thought that was great that Lizzie got to join us. Yeah. yeah. So, nerds that we are we were like wait but you wrote a book and we're in your you wrote a book and she's like great but you're actors we're like no no but you wrote a, <laughs> you yeah. wrote a book what, cool. what we do is not impressive we're just saying yeah. the lines that you wrote you had to come up with them <laughs> right right yeah. yeah that was so fun to have her there that was really so for for uh you know sharp-eyed viewers it's one one scene if i have it right one scene in the shop where Right before Helen speaks, she, the, there's a woman paying for something at the the counter. Mm -hmm. so that's that's Lizzie Shane. Well, a red scarf. Red scarf. No, reddish, reddish red brown hair. Yeah, I think she had a red jacket on too. Um, anyway, she's fabulous. And yeah. go buy the book because yes, yes, uh, how, yes. How, because there's more in the book that we didn't get to cover. That's right. Hence the need for sweeter than chocolate too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love it. <laughs> Dan, you're up. Okay. So, in the film, Helen and Lucy and Dean are all facing new chapters in their lives. Can we each share what one of our favorite qualities about our characters is? Uh, um, yes, we can. You want to go, Brenda? Sure. Um, I, I, uh, 
I like Helen's twinkle. I like her sense of humor. Um, you know, I, I saw her when I first read the script as kind of a Cupid behind the scenes. Like she's behind the counter, just like matching people. She's putting it all together. And she's really proud of the fact that there's this wall of love in her shop that is the evidence of the successful love stories that have taken place in this shop that is the lineage of her husband and his family. And it's still continuing on. And so there's this, she, she honors the past. She looks forward to the future, even though she's scared. Uh, of it. So it, she takes, she has a little bit of courage, but um, she's, I love the fact that she loves her daughter so much and supports her daughter um, and wants her daughter to have the best of life, even if it's not possible for her in her mind, um, mm -hmm. that, that it's all about other people's loves. It, there's a generosity of spirit to Helen that I think is really wonderful. Um, and also, you know, that, that kind of the light and the dark kind of balance each other. I think the more, um, the more she's gone through, the more she sees, I, I call it the yin yang. It's like, you know, um, whenever there's dark, there's light. So when she, when she goes toward that, that possibility of love again, I just think it's really courageous. So. Yeah. I love that. Um, I admire, um, I admire Lu how protective Lucy is of the people that she loves. Mm -hmm. I feel like so much of what she's doing in life is trying to protect her loved ones. Um, she's so protective of her mom, wanting to make sure her mom doesn't get hurt again, wanting to make sure her mom's okay. She's protective of her friends. Mm -hmm. Um, she's protective of the shop. And of the story of the Cupids, you know, because of the lineage, because of the memory of her grandparents. Um, and I, I love that she would put her own, she shelves her own um, desire for love and any of that. She shelves her own needs in a lot of ways um, for, in order to protect the people that she loves. She learns that that doesn't actually protect them, right? Which is part of what's interesting about life. Um, and that you can't, you can't always protect the people that you love as much as she wanted to protect her dad as much as, you know, you, you don't have control over that. And then it's about what happens next. But that sort of fierceness with which she loves, I think, um, is something that I aspire to. Um, and I, and then she gets to be very brave in the face of it, because when you love that fiercely, you can, you can lose very fiercely. Um, and, and yourself back up and uh, figuring out how to love again is also really hard. And I think a lot of people will relate to that. I certainly do. It's really hard to open your heart back up after heartbreak. Um, and, and yet, and yet you do somehow. So I admire that about her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a, uh, with, uh, with Dean, there's, uh, because he's a journalist, there's a thing about him that I think is pretty admirable that he kind of, um, he's willing to, uh, especially in his kind of, in his career, I guess, he's willing to uh, push through and to, to, to kind of, um, I don't know, ruffle feathers or put people maybe even in uncomfortable situations if it means getting to the truth or mm -hmm. getting to uh, something closer to the truth. And I think, I think that's admirable. I'm not, uh, not like that in real life. I'm maybe a uh, peacemaker. Um, I won't uh, put people on the spot, but he does, but I don't think he's doing it out of any kind of uh, maliciousness. He's doing it because he wants to know the truth. And mm -hmm. I think there's even an echo of that right towards the end of the movie. He kind of pulls Lucy into a broadcast that he's doing. and. She might be a little bit uncomfortable about it at first, but I think he knows this is kind of what has to happen for them to get to the truth, the truth of their relationship. You've got to be in this with me. I know you're uncomfortable, but stick it out. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're heading to the truth. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's nice. And 
similarly to like you were just saying, Eloise, he uh, he's able to eventually, with Lucy's help, kind of um, open up again and 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 move past the move past the um, the kind of the idea of love that he had as something that uh, that hurts, and uh, he's able to move past that and open himself up again, which is admirable when you can do it. So Hmm. I like these characters. <laughs> I really do. I admire both of them for different reasons. So it's fun to hear you guys talk about them as yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love Dean's fighting for the little guy, you know, and I love that he's willing to to make people uncomfortable. And the protective quality is, is so admirable. Um, I think we have another question. And mm -hmm. Uh, I think we've touched on this, but it says the, the movie features a variety of different chocolates, and we got to try making them too, which you guys talked about. Um, mm -hmm. What each of our favorite chocolate or sweet treat? Oh. Eloise. Eloise. Okay. Um, this is this speaks right to my heart because one of my favorite things to do is to ask about what they're eating all the time and to know what people are eating. So, um, so I'm so excited to hear what your guys' favorite uh, chocolate treats are or sweet treats um i will take anything chocolate like i just had some chocolate right before i did this because i was like <laughs> i should have the book. like not because of this but just because of, before i do anything important i have a little bit of chocolate this one was like a maple maple crunch chocolate bar which is great quite great yeah yeah it's delicious um i love a chocolate chip cookie Mm. Or a chocolate cork. Do you guys know what chocolate corks are? No. Cork? No. They're like, oh, maybe that's just a thing at my local bakery. It's like a um, it's like a brownie in the shape of a like big cork. And it's but it's not really a brownie. It's like it's like between a cake. It's like a moist cake. Wow. It's, it's delicious. Wow. And got a little bit of powdered sugar on it. Um yep. yeah. But Basically anything chocolate. I'll do anything mm -hmm. chocolate. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a I have a huge sweet tooth. I I love I love sweet things, but for me, my 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 main jam is like baked goods. You know, um, cookies and brownies and pies and cakes and muffins. It's all it's it's all good. Well, um, do you mean baking them or do you mean eating them? Oh, well, I mean, eating them, but I, I do like to bake as well. It's true. Um, I do like to bake, but that's not all the time. Um, when I do bake, though, I like to make like cool, interesting cookies and brownies, not just, you know, your standards. Make a chocolate cork. Make a chocolate cork. Yeah, I love this idea. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> I'll find the recipe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just, yes, I'm a real sucker for for baked goods and a sucker for bakeries and cafes and everything mm. they have glass yeah <laughs> yeah um you know i have i have a, a friend that i've known since my early 20s and she grew up in baltimore and there's a chocolatier in baltimore that is very much like how sweet it is it's been making handmade chocolates forever and every christmas she orders me a box about this big of dark chocolate almond bark. Mm. And I'm telling you, it is heaven. Almonds are crunchy. The dark chocolate is smooth and sweet. And I try to savor that, but I swear it's gone by the end of January. <laughs> I don't know how, but it brings me so much joy to know that this is part of my best friend's home and part of her childhood. And yet she honors me because she knows how much I love it. And, um, I've had, I've had, uh, moments where I've hidden it from myself and I've torn the kitchen apart, trying to find it again. I did it a little too well, thinking I could make it last just a little longer. Um, but also, you know, sweet things like you, Dan, I love, I have a sweet tooth and growing up the first bonding moments that I had with just myself and my mother were in the kitchen baking. And that just brings me so much joy because it m reminds me of my mom. Whenever I have anything sweet, it's because mom and I were making it together. So. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. Can we have a, can we have a baking party? Can we just get together and bake? <laughs> but it's just so it's so um that's you know that story is like it's it's uh, food food and emotion and family and connection are so intertwined. Yeah. Right? So baking is like alchemy. Right. I mean, it's alchemy. You take all these disparate elements and you put them together and something rises and it changes form. And it, it, you look at it in the oven and it's moving. I make popovers every Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And it's like they 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 just bubble up and they're huge. I'm like, how is this possible? <laughs> it is. It's magic. Yeah, it's magic and it's memory, too. Right. At the same yeah. time, it's also, you know, it's. It's the magic of your childhood and of the smell of your childhood and the taste mm -hmm. of you know, all of that. Or, or someone who's important to you. Maybe it's not in your childhood, but, you know, someone who's important to you. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of like passing down of recipes, um, being a way of passing down love and passing down memory in that way. Because like, let's be honest, our, our, whether it's your mom's or your dad's or an aunt or whoever, like that one recipe you th you're thinking of right now, now that you're like, nope, no one could ever do it better than that. We all have that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I still have my mother's baking tin with all of her handwritten recipes in it. And I have five sisters and somehow I got baking tin and her cookbook that I remember her cooking out of. And I'm telling you, it's just to see her handwriting, to see all the little splotches of, you know, food on it and that kind of thing. It's just, you're right, Eloise. It's, it's family, it's memories, it's, it's connection. It's, you know, we, a lot of our memories are through our sense of smell. And yeah. so baking is really, you know, that really wakes up. The yeah. When, just when, you know, Christmas uh, happened, I was thinking, what do I want to do in my house, my family to like, get ready for Christmas? And it was just, I just wanted to bake. Just wanted to bake cookies and i realized that that was you know that's me bringing forward what my mother gave us at christmas time i mean she did so much uh but the the baking the smell of it the magic of it the mm -hmm. fun of it that's kind of that just imprinted on me and now that's what i want to share with my family and my son i just want to make cookies i want to this is the holidays Look at the different kinds of cookies I made. <laughs> you know, this is edible love right here. And the funny thing about baking is you can't improvise. Like you can improvise with, with a recipe. You can throw in a new spice and it changes it. You try to improvise with baking. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it. I mean, but it'll be a disaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, all right, guys, it's our last question. Should we do it? Sure. Yeah, I want this to end. I know. Me too. Uh, okay, so there's really nothing sweeter than chocolate, except perhaps being open to love. So after filming this movie, do we each believe in the magic of the chocolate cupids? Yes. Yes. <laughs> And but I think it goes back to what you said about the lucky socks. Yeah. Is it the belief in love or is it the actual, you know, the thing? Um, I, I do believe in them. And here's why. Because it brought you two into my life. And that is like, honestly, <laughs> that feels pretty magic to me. Um, not just as actors, you guys are they're truly some of the best actors I've ever worked with in my life. And I feel incredibly lucky to have gotten to dance with you on screen metaphorically and also just literally off screen. Um, but there is something really magic about this film and, um, and it was, it was the two of you and getting to meet you. So I, I believe they were, they were magic in, in that way. And, um, and I think that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, guys, that takes us to our to our rapid fire game. Oh yeah! Oh, this is going to bring out the competition. Okay, I have to, I have to out you guys. So I'm behind so sorry. the scenes, wait, is this a game? No, it's not a competition. I know, but I'm just going to say I like games. In my family, oh. we play games, and somebody always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Behind the scenes, I would watch these two play. What was it called? Set. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, on yes, when we were filming awesome. the movie, Eloise and I were uh, playing the card game set off. And off. watching these two rapid fire with these cards kind of match all these different symbols. And I, I consider myself a really good game player. And I tried to play. I finally went, okay, I am out of my league. <laughs> we are just too good. So I, I'm trying to um, win something here because I was yeah. not putting that. Well, What are the rules of winning? How do you win? Do you go the quickest? No, there's no winning. I'm just being silly. <laughs> no, now I want to win, though. Too. <laughs> okay, well, you, you'll each answer and I'll decide who's right. Um, <laughs> to, to wrap up this, this live chat, we're going to play our rapid fire game of This or That, inspired by Sweeter Than Chocolate and Love You, Ari. So you can each answer. We can all answer. Yeah, you have to. First question. Chocolates or flowers? Chocolates. Flowers. Mm, sorry, the correct answer is chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda's <Whoa>. winning. <laughs> <laughs> what if, I mean, listen, I love chocolates too. Like, it depends on the context. Any of these depend on the context. Can we make it a rapid fire, Eloise? You're slowing the game down. <laughs> There's no right or wrong. It's how your heart, it's how your heart feels. Uh, are we going to go back and forth reading them all? Should I read them all? Yeah, yeah. No, I'll go. I'll go. And then I decide who wins this one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Make homemade dessert, or oh wait, sorry, I, mi- I ris- misread it. Okay, make a homemade dessert slash chocolate, or buy ready made. Make it at home. 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 There is a right answer. We all got that one right. <laughs> uh, unless you work really hard and you're like at work all day and you have to buy something from the store because lots of people need that too. And like, if you're in a pinch, that's a great thing to do too. That also wins. I think we're realizing there Supporting is a small answer. business is good, right? <laughs> As we learned in the film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cooperative game, Dan. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, be the one to ask questions or be the one to answer questions? Ask. That's a tie for me. I feel like it's an exchange. It's, it's how you connect. So to ask and then to be able to share your heart too. I think it's both. I'm sorry, I'm not confused. Brenda wins, Brenda wins that one. That's the right answer. <laughs> yeah. I am winning. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, go dancing on a date or to a fancy dinner. Ooh, uh, go dancing. You know, I was gonna say go dancing too because I met my husband dancing, so. Hey. That wins for me. Uh, dancing. Yes, dancing. Great. We're all going dancing. But can we go bowling? Can we like go to dinner and then go dancing? Yeah. I think we can we go bowling. That's not on the case. <laughs> um, okay, Brenda, you do one. Oh, um, take a stroll through the park or through a, uh, a farmer's market. Through the park. Mm, I don't know. You go first. You go, Brenda. I don't know. Um, Through the park for me, but you learn a lot about someone when you go to a farmer's market with them. So Mm. if it's a date situation, I'd say farmer's market because you're going to learn a lot about what they like and don't like and how they treat people and Mm. and interact with people that they've never met before. You learn a lot. But I love nature, so it's always a park. Yeah, I think I go park too, although if it's a bad park, and a good farmer's market. <laughs> Are there bad parks? Yeah. Or if you need groceries, you know, there's like. <laughs> These hypotheticals are tough, you know, like you need more context. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so coffee. coffee or hot chocolate? Well, is it good coffee or bad coffee? Oh. Bad coffee, bad coffee and good hot chocolate. The answer, <laughs> that question still stands. Wow. Bad coffee or good hot chocolate? It, it's always coffee for me, but I had the most insane hot chocolate in Italy. And so if it was that chocolate, I'd go for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd, coffee. I couldn't take coffee out of my life. Yeah, exactly. See, even if it's yeah. bad, you got to go bad coffee. But um, some hot chocolate with a bit of coffee in it is also really good. Mocha. Win, just- win, win, win. Dan for the win-win. <laughs> 
Curl up reading a book or watching movies. Why not do both with Sweeter Than Chocolate? <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. How long have you been practicing that? Just came to me. Just came to me. <laughs> He's got books behind him. We know what Dan does. doesn't read. I don't know if you can tell, but Dan does not read. So obviously <laughs> his answer is. That's just fake. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would call up reading a book. I, I think I would too. <sighs> you know, I, I love books, but I love where mu- movies take me and I can digest them faster. So the hard part about reading a book is I, I, want the world to stop so I can stay in that world. Yeah. And at least in two hours, I can have an entire world happen to me in a movie. So I'm going to say movies. Sorry, I love nice. this with you. No, that's <laughs> the right answer because this is a this is a Facebook Live about a movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I am winning. I think I'm winning. I think Brenda wins. You won. <laughs> <laughs> you won. Um, you guys, I don't want this to be over because I love hanging out with you, but we have reached the end of our hangout. Yeah. Um, what? Folks, if you liked hanging out with us, you can go watch our movie because it's basically like hanging out with us for a few hours. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we can't wait for you to watch the premiere of our new movie, Sweeter Than Chocolate. Yeah. Tune in on Saturday, February the 4th at 8, 7 Central, only on Hallmark Channel. And as an addition, you can tweet along while you watch using hashtag sweeter than chocolate. And guys, get some chocolate so you can eat it. Yes. And and might I recommend dark chocolate? Unless you're under 30, you're allowed milk. Oh, oh, there's the heart. Joining us, everybody. Thank you, guys. I'd love seeing you all. Dan wins. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> love you guys. Oh, wait, wait, I have. Oh, no, never mind. I was going to say, I have, I have some Cupids. I took one from the set. So I'm going to have a Cupid when I watch it on February. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> you win. Okay, you win again. <laughs> okay, bye, guys. This was the best. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.